John, let me, uh, if I may, I want to slightly switch gears and talk a little bit about this idea of data-driven culture. So do you think that data intelligence is the next great differentiator in business? And, and, and would you say that most companies are failing to capitalize on it? So from a completely unbiased perspective, absolutely. No, I'm kidding. Uh, we do see through <laughs> data, data lenses, but it, there is no getting around a strong argument for data is the new oil that the name of the game in private equity is integration, being able to show that it's not just multiples arbitrage of adding companies to companies, but integrating them and performing and coordinating those business units and leveraging the strengths of each. And the way that you integrate is data. You know, if business isn't about being able to clearly see empirically, how are we doing? Uh, where are we doing well? Where are we not? Where are the risks? Where are the opportunities? And then being able to adjust your approach and your your prioritization based on that, I, you know, I don't know what it is. You could also say business is all about people or business is all about good finance or sales. Those would be arguments you could make. But undergirding all of that is the ability to see into those areas and measure is what we're doing working instead of we're not growing. Let's shift our strategy again from an armchair perspective and not really getting into the meat of what isn't working and why. So, yeah, I think it's it's the next revolution in business. And I do think that, you know, we see a filter because people get to us because they need help. But, you know, we've talked to thousands of companies. There are precious few that are really wired for data, really have mastery of their business from the numbers perspective. And there's quite a few reasons for that we could talk about. But that's that's our impression. Yeah. And, you know, John, when it, when it comes to data-driven culture, one thing is for certain, and that is that not all cultures, uh, they're, they're not all created equal, right? <laughs> no. So, um, how can data-driven companies create a culture of ownership where each employee is empowered with the visibility into performance metrics needed to drive motivation and strategic thinking? And as we talk about all the time on our podcast, this idea of the triad, people, processes, and technology, and the tech stack and the technology is one thing. But the people and processes to support your data and really making sure that you do get good business intelligence, that's a major piece of the data-driven culture as well. But what do you say about that? How do companies actually create these data-driven cultures so that employees are just more empowered and they have more motivation and they're more strategic in their thinking using the data? Yeah. You know, there's a shift that I think most companies have largely made from the top down uh, sort of legacy approach to business. We'll tell you what to do and you do it. Employees today are as interested in having an impact and having agency as they are in salary and benefits. The concept of of distributed decision making from the book Team of Teams uh, is a good sort of outline of of that approach where in Afghanistan, in order for them to be able to be effective on the ground, and I guess you could debate that, how effective were they? But um, it was impossible to have a policy from on high and have that distribute through the organization and get to tactics that really made sense in the moment, in the situation. Similar to businesses, uh, if you've got folks that are just doing what they're told, you're not leveraging their full capacity and they're likely to leave if they're talented people. So how do you empower them? It starts with the management team, the executives. You've got to give them good visibility into the six or eight metrics and the data behind it to, to give them the why and give some color to it that really define the health of their organization, their, their vitals for their business. Um, they have the biggest leverage in the company. You start there and then you land and expand. So if you've got all your data in one place and you've got that high level company scorecard, you begin to look at where can we get wins early for the lightest lift. And it's often in sales, sometimes in finance, often in operations. And you begin to build out those semantic layers, those reporting data models, so that those teams, the analysts on those teams, or just the, the manager can get the insights they want quickly. And ultimately, you're looking to uh, have at really every persona have a scoreboard, a dashboard as quality as the executives so they can see very clearly, here's my process for analyzing how I'm doing, why I'm doing well or not, and the details I need to take action on it. 
if you do that, then you give people firm ground. There's not this vague and constant pressure to, quote, do better. There's not going home every day and feeling like, I didn't get it done. If you're uh, on track to meet your bogey, then uh, there's some satisfaction. There's some ownership and agency. There's decision making. You begin to harness uh, more from your people because they have an ownership position for their area of the business, their own sub business. And then that's coordinated through a shared view of the whole value creation plan in scoreboards and numbers um, so they can see how they're contributing to the whole. So that makes a big difference. Around our office, there's TVs in seven or eight places that have our key dashboards and everyone can see how we're doing on our growth goals and, and other things. Um, you see it when companies put good dashboards on the production floor. You can see it from, you know, some of those those old almost mythic stories of, I uh, can't remember who the big magnate was, but walking into a steel plant and asking how many heats did we complete this shift? And, and he's told by the foreman six. And so he writes a big six on the floor in chalk walks away and the next day he comes in and there's a seven on there. The six is smudged out because that next shift came in and said, what's this six? Oh, that's how many heats they completed. Okay, we're going to beat that. You give people a goal. You know, they're, they're not likely to play a sport if there's no score. You, you, as beautiful as golf is, if there's not a hole, you're going to find something else to do with a goal. So, um, you know, that's, that's what you're after. And it takes some time. It starts with the execs. Yeah. Yeah, you'd mentioned, John, my my next question I wanted to ask, which, you you know, you in part answered, but, you know, it was what are some of the common challenges that you and your team have seen in companies that are trying to adopt, a, you know, a data driven approach and how do they overcome them? And, you know, you just mentioned here in that in response to that last question, you know, some of these ideas like you would mentioned policy on high. Right. For me, that doesn't yeah. exactly advocate for or endorse a data driven culture and this idea you know, you'd mention uh, folks just doing what they are told, you know, so I, I would say those are certainly a couple of challenges, but then you shared with our listeners, you know, really in part, some ways to overcome those challenges. And certainly, you know, I would say a shared view of value of the value creation plan, you know, and I, I think that that that's certainly one of the major pieces is just, you know, right out of the gates. Um, if you want to endorse and advocate for a data driven culture, People have to be aligned. They have to know what your your mission is and what your values are and and, and what that actual plan is uh, in which to accomplish that, right? So I thought that was um, a pretty good insight there. Um, do you yeah. have anything else you'd like to add in terms of, you know, some of the most common challenges that you see? And then how do you mitigate those challenges? Yeah, well, we see a lot of cycles wasted trying to align the deal team or the board on the PE side and the management team. A lot of time spent by the management team producing a manually <clears throat> created Excel spreadsheet slash PowerPoint for their monthly reporting and not really using those reports to drive their management of the business. Frustration on the PE side of just not having visibility. And, you know, one of the, the main hypotheses of our business, what we concluded after being PE sponsored execs and after working with 250 plus companies is that at the root of virtually every business challenge is poor visibility somewhere and probably true of marriage, <laughs> poor communication somewhere. So it, it starts there. So culturally, if you can get those aligned, PE firms are looking to be attractive to potential acquisitions by claiming, rightfully or otherwise, that they are in support, they, they're a value add. They understand the industry. They're good at helping to empower executives to be more successful. And if they're not aligned, they spend their time wringing their hands instead of empowering. Once you get that co-team, board and management team on the same page, it's much easier to spread that through the organization. On a technical side, I don't know if I'm answering ahead of questions. I apologize if I am. But the challenge that we see there is it starts with, like you said, uh, process. Um, a lot of times there's just a question of what are the data points we need to understand to run this business well? And do we have that data and is it reliable and is it current? And you can spend forever getting everything just so before you start having those insights. But we find that those insights come by early, quick and dirty dives into the data and showing here's here's what we're seeing. And and executives and, and VPs can say, no, no, that's not at all uh, the case, or that's missing some key information, and that begins to get the ball rolling. 
the other thing technically is companies that say, okay, we need a, we need our data consolidated. We need better visibility. And it sounds like an IT project. They send it to IT. IT typically has a huge punch list of things they're dealing with and may not have spent years as a team working as a, a data intelligence, data management team. And so they apply their smarts and they uh, begin to learn things and typically will put together a, an idiosyncratic platform for data uh, management and data analytics that then become dependent on a few people, not easily transferable, often arcane and difficult to deal with. Yeah. Um, and so it, it's important unless you have that team to have, and this sounds like I'm saying call me, which please do if you want to, but uh, <laughs> to have some folks who have done it wrong a lot of times and figured out how to do it right and have a uh, repeatable, transferable, transparent, you know, understandable by the average human being data platform that then is scalable and performant and, and hardy is robust and doesn't break. And the tools for that, again, are getting better and better. So we can help a company spin those things up and work collaboratively with their analysts and their tech people so that they can take over more and more and own it in-house eventually.